Hey YouTube, welcome back to another RC Horse video. Chris here, and today I'm gonna to show you step-by-step step how to build this reservoir structure. So th this reservoir structure houses a submersible well pump or a common four inch well pump. Um, and this is intended to be used in like a, a water holding tank or something of that sort. And we've got this design together because what it does is accomplishes a lot of different things for reservoir pumping applications. You've got this elbow on the end of the intake that when this is installed, resting on the bottom of the tank, you get sediment and debris occasionally that settles on the bottom of the tank. This ensures that you're only drawing the clean, clear water from the tank into the system. At the same time, this configuration is ideal for a submersible pump because it allows you to pump the liquid level in the tank to about this level, which is quite nice uh, when you compare that with the way a submersible pump is typically installed, which is in a vertical position, uh, and the intake is about the center line of the pump, so you're limiting your drawdown capabilities, especially if you've got a tank that isn't very tall. Um, so this is a great system. Additionally, we've got some supports over here. These are gonna prevent any torque of the motor. Now this is just a little half horsepower pump in here, but you can easily put much larger pumps in here and this is going to become more of a factor. It, it keeps the intake oriented in the appropriate direction having these and it also helps to stabilize the pump and prevent it from moving around from within the tank. And at the top here we have a well seal. That's what uh, prevents water from coming in that end. And the reason that we want to do that is we want because the motor, of course, is in the bottom, so we want all the water to come in from this end, go past the motor for cooling, and then be pumped to your home or wherever you're pumping the water to. Uh, so we've got a well seal here. We'll show you how to install that, and of course the pump and everything there. We're gonna jump right into the installation. All right, so before we get started, I just wanna walk you through the uh, different pieces of equipment that we're gonna be using today to uh, get this reservoir system put together. So what we've got here is we've got some uh, class 125 SDR 35 pipe. Uh, the reason we're not using schedule 40 pipe in this application is the schedule 40 is too thick and won't allow the pump to actually fit. So we've got to use a, a little bit larger diameter pipe uh, so that everything fits just fine and the motor gets proper cooling. We've also got the elbow, which as you saw before, the elbow kind of points in the upward direction. That helps to prevent sediment and so forth from the, that falls to the bottom of the tank from getting sucked up into the pump. Since we're using that reduced diameter uh, PVC material and this is just a standard Schedule 40, we're gonna have to have a bushing that goes in there to adapt to this uh, smaller diameter material. We've also got uh, this other piece of this material that we're going to be using as a stabilizer to keep the, uh, the motor in the upright position and keep it from rotating. That way we can always assure that our elbow is pointed in the up direction and we're not pulling in sediment. Uh, finally at the top we're going to seal it well off with a well seal. And to get all these components together we're going to use a variety of clamps. There's going to be some clamps that actually go directly on the pump motor itself. Those clamps, as you'll see here in a minute, helped for the cooling process because it's not recommended to just simply put this pump in here and seal it up because um, the pump will sit directly on the plastic and it won't have proper water moving past that particular area that it's contacting the plastic and then it, you'll get a hot spot and you'll actually, uh, it's easy to identify because we've seen a lot of motors and, and it gets kind of a rainbow uh, effect to it. Similar to if you took a, a handheld propane torch and, and torched the side of this, it would kind of turn purple. So that's the whole idea there. So we're gonna throw some clamps on the motor. We're gonna put some clamps on uh, where this well seal is because we want to make sure that when we tighten this well seal down this part expands outward that th it's not going to crack this out over time because PVC does become more brittle with age so we're taking some precautions to prevent that. Um, so let's just jump right into it and start getting this motor ready to go and we'll start assembling things as we move along. Uh, so jumping right into it, these are the clamps that we're going to use for the cooling aspect. So there's three clamps here. Um, and what we do is, so we measured things out and we want these clamps to be about two inches uh, up the motor here. And so if you'll notice these clamps, kind of give you a better angle, these clamps have this little nub that sticks up. And we use this type of uh, 
uh, pliers here, the snub nose crimps, to tighten that down, and then this actually raises up in, even farther. So we want to position these. Let me just pull these off real quick and I can show you. That's a little heavy. So we want to position these so they kind of make contact in three different positions. So you've got one, two, and three. And that's going to help to keep the motor centered in the pipe and help to ensure proper cooling is actually happening. So we'll put those on real quick here. All right. So now that we've got those installed, we're ready to move on to the next step. Now that we've got the pump in there and you got a chance to kind of see the clearance that was all the way around once we got the clamps applied, you can see how that's going to benefit the motor staying cold. So now we're going to put these uh, PVC fittings to use and uh, get all that part of it situated. Yeah, just a reminder, we like to use clear primer and clear glue just because we think it leaves a cleaner finish for these manufactured products. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get the support situated here so we're going to run a clamp through and tighten that down don't want to over tighten it good and tight bend this up and over take and cut it just like that So that ain't going anywhere. So um, you can just see this gives some nice stability. It also prevents the elbow from tipping over and, and sucking up a bunch of sediment. There's quite a bit of rotational support here. I can still move it if need be, uh, but for the most part, it's pretty well situated here and it's not gonna move. Um, so now we can get this well seal installed and get that clamped up. But we do need to, we do need to get this nipple installed and then run the cables through this well seal before we do that. Okay, so clamp first. All right, so now we're gonna get this well seal installed. We've run the wire through. Now we're gonna run the stinger through or the, the nipple that we just installed. And the reason that we use a, a nipple here is actually we use a flexible hose um, from this point up out to the discharge of the tank that this pump sits in. Uh, but this, the rigidity of this nipple is crucial to, for the sealing of the seal. Uh, and then the flexible pipe is nice because it allows you to situate the, the system anywhere in your tank and easily pull it out and service it without having to climb in the tank and mess with the plumbing. Um, so that's kind of the, the design here. Make sure my wires are all in the right direction. So I'm gonna start working this in and uh, see where it's gonna bind up on me. So it's binding up right over here. You can't really see it, but, so I'm just gonna use my flathead screwdriver and push on the rubber just like this, uh, where it's sticking up past the lip so that I can just kind of get it worked into place here. So once you get it a little bit, work the rubber a little bit, give it a few more taps, figure out where it's binding up again and work those spots. Now this one keeps binding up in the same stinking spot here. Get on in there, Betsy. Looks like we're home free now. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we can tighten these bolts down and Snug it up just a little bit. Now I'm not going to tighten these down all the way quite yet. We've got to get that clamp tightened down before we expand this. Okay, now we're ready for the clamp. All right, 
So now we've got that situated. So with this, this type of clamp, it uses this, uh, this stamper to indent the, the buckle, we'll call it, um, to kind of give it an anchor point. So you wanna hit that pretty steadily with a hammer. I'm gonna give that two hits. There we go, that should be good, one for good measure. All right, all right, so now we're gonna just finish up. All right, well, we've finished it. We've got this thing all put together. So just keep in mind that RC Worst is constantly doing custom projects like this, and we've always got unique designs available for almost any application out there. So if you've got something unique you need done, then give us a call. Um, and also be sure to like and subscribe this video. We are anxious to hear any comments that you have, uh, good or bad, and uh, we'd love to hear from you. So new videos Tuesdays and Fridays, so stay tuned and that's the benefit of subscribing. So we'll see you next time YouTube.